Hey everyone, welcome to the latest installment of The Way It Is, and I'm here with Joel Malcolm, the the other half of the, the, third. the, other, the other third of the triumvirate. <laughs> You're right, exactly. Um, anyway, so we're here today to talk about, I guess, the state of affairs, uh, uh, where we are in the Kingston market. In fact, we had a, a uh, office breakfast meeting this morning, and and sure enough, uh, at the end when we're settling up the bill, the uh, the server um, said, "Oh, I, I wasn't eavesdropping, but your conversation uh, talked about real estate. Are you are you realtors?" And of course, yes, we are. And of course, the next question is, "How's the market?" Um, so here we are, um, and and let's understand this. And I think we've talked about it, or, or at least alluded to it in, in previous podcasts. But the market has changed substantially. And it certainly has changed uh, significantly, substantially, and shifted, um, uh, I guess, a lot faster uh, and a lot more significantly than most had anticipated. Um, and by that, I mean that, um, you know, uh, we're not in this frenzied, uh, let's hold offers, let's get 10 offers, let's get 100000 over the asking price. Those days are, are, are definitely gone um, and perhaps, uh, you know, never to be seen again. It's really hard to say. Um, and of course, we're also in a, a, a time of rate increases, which tomorrow, uh, unfortunately, we had to record this today, but so we don't know what that's going to bring tomorrow. I know that everyone's, th the Bank of Canada has been threatening three quarters of a point increase. So we'll have to see how that plays out in real terms for, for customers in terms of how the retail side of it, i.e. Uh, the chartered banks respond in terms of where they raise their their prime their lending rates right um we also wanted to touch on though given that joel's got the latest uh real residential real estate statistics from the kingston area real estate association so joel go ahead and just maybe give some of the highlights yeah absolutely so for the second month in a row uh the average sale price has dropped uh, these aren't significant drops it's only down 1.8 percent from a month ago but that is still a significant change for the past two years where we've seen month over month increases of usually you know high single low double digits um and that's uh so that's i mean kind of tells you where we're at in terms of taking into account those huge um, market uh, rate increases which have obviously done what the bank wanted to happen. They've slowed down the real estate uh, industry quite a bit, um, for better or for worse. Interesting to see where we go from here because you can only keep going up so much. Um, it's, it's And it's to be seen if that drop is going to keep happening. I assume so, as long as we to keep going up, inverse relationship and all. But yep. to be seen, it's obviously not, we're not going pre-pandemic, obviously there. Um, the amount of active listings is up 52.6% from a year ago. So that just means if you go look on realtor.ca, you'll see about 52% more homes listed in the Kingston area, which is great, which means there's more inventory. Um, the amount of new listings uh, coming on the market are, is up 24%, which is phenomenal. Uh, more options for a lot of buyers out there, not getting caught up in scenarios where they need to stretch their budgets to the, the states they were before, getting caught up in bidding wars. Um, you Making know, unconditional offers. Yeah, rash right? decisions, trying to secure a home. Um, they're able to take their time and, and throw in a financing, throw in a building inspection. And, and truthfully, it's getting back to that market that's probably better for all sides involved in a transaction. Less of a headache, to say the least. Yeah, does it give you an average days on the market there, uh, I think it Joel? does somewhere. Let's see if I can... Because I, I want to say that it's now hedging towards 30 days, uh, probably a little under that. And so that's what we're seeing. We're seeing, and I think I've mentioned it before, pre-pandemic market conditions, probably to 2018, more than 2019, where there's still activity in the marketplace. There's still those that, even though rates are going up, still qualify. There's still those that have incomes to support the increased rates. And let's understand this. Five-year money right now fixed is hovering just over 5%. Variable rates are hovering just over three or just under four, like three and a half, 3.7. Um, so, so that meaning that there's still affordability in, in, in the lending side of things. Um, the stress test, however, and this is probably, I guess, a, a good and a bad thing is just over 7% now. I mean, I just, just, <laughs> just less than six months ago, it was, it was around five and a quarter percent. So that's taken a, so banks are, uh, you know, if you get past the stress test, 
obviously you're qualified because uh, you know you're going to be able to secure a rate that's two percent less than that. Um, you know if you're going to get a fixed mortgage or a variable rate mortgage. Um, did you, or did you... Yeah, yeah. So I, I actually do have it here. So the median median days on market is ten, which is up from eight a year ago. So that's a twenty five percent increase, which is great. Pre pandemic, so we're talking June 2019, it's it was seventeen days on market. So we're heading back up it's to be seen whether we're gonna. Hit yeah, that 17, and, and but... again, and, and and so and that's what we're seeing in the marketplace right now. There's properties that are coming on. Uh, you know, uh, there's buyers out there that are that are looking at the properties. Uh, you know, you might get a showing today. You might get a showing in another day. You might get a showing. So you know, you're going to get viewings, but you're not going to get. Uh, you know, uh, this influx of people wanting, 10 people wanting to see it in 24 hours or anything like that. And then people have time. They have time and they have choices now, right? To see what else comes on or to see what else they can choose from. And then there you go. It, it might take 10 days to flesh out a buyer. It might take 14. It might take 18. It might take 32. Um, depending again, of course, on price point, depending, of course, on location. And yet, even in the last several, in the last week, we've also seen properties that are getting the asking price or getting over the asking yep. price, marginally over the asking price, um, you know, in terms of $10,000 or $15,000 or something like that. So again, and that speaks to the right property in the right location always has buyers see seeking it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always more than one buyer looking for certain areas, looking for certain properties in certain areas in Kingston. We all know some of those coveted areas that that, that exist, yeah, right? Absolutely. So, um, but I guess uh, the other thing I, you know, um, more big picture stuff and uh, my bit of my rant, because I've talked to people about this, those that'll listen anyway, um, you know, the Bank of Canada has to be very careful going forward, right? Because they're, they're utilizing the only tool in their toolbox right now, which is increasing rates. No that and, and you can talk to economists knowing that increasing rates doesn't drop inflation instantaneously. It's not a direct correlation. It takes time for that to flow through because we've seen inflation actually go up during these rate increases. Yeah, it's now at a point. Lag time, right? yeah. yeah. So they're going to reach a point where they simply if unless they want to plunge the economy into a the R word into a recession, they're going to reach a point where I dare say they can't not they can't raise rates any longer. They have to maintain the status quo, keep the rates where they are, uh, and and find other alternatives um, because what you're doing every time there's a rate increase is you are taking buyers out of the marketplace, right? And 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 leaving only those that have, which again flies in the face and is counterintuitive to all of this other speak about housing affordability, lack of housing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people can't find something to rent or to buy. Well, there you go. With every rate increase, you just, you take 20,000, 20% out of somebody's, <laughs> out of somebody's budget. Yeah. So now you've, how, how do you expect, you know, anyway. Well, well, stress, stress test is at seven and a quarter now. Yes. Like, that is crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's severe. That's very severe. Yeah. That's um, a huge drop. I mean, yeah. I mean, again, I, I've said it time after time when I started in this business uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, the average five-year money was 12% in Kingston. And people were excited about getting 11 and three quarters when they did. So people will still buy houses in these markets. Let's understand that. Uh, those that have income and have cash uh, or capital, access to capital, will actually seize on some opportunities now. In fact, we had a conference call with a client now yeah. <laughs> that we sold the property to uh, earlier well, they bought it last late last year uh, to renovate to for the purpose of reselling. But this fellow lives in the property, takes his time, meticulously renovates them, does a fantastic job. Um, and they, they, you know they're at a point now where I, you know, we're going to try, but I doubt they're going to sell it for what they need to recoup to get out of the property. But when we're having the conversation, the first words out of his mouth were, sounds like a good time to buy, <laughs> right? Which is, it is. So, and, and again, uh, let's put this into context because I get annoyed when people say prices are dropping. Yes, we've talked about this. They're dropping from those crazy artificially inflated levels of January, February, March, April. Yeah. Um, and we'll have a graph that we're going to put up uh, on the podcast, yeah, uh, overlay it. But uh, you talk about that. The yeah, so I'm just looking right now at uh, ITSO, which is essentially the the matrix board we have. How many? How many? Local, Twenty-three boards. 20, I think twenty-three really. local boards in Ontario. Uh, and their average price now this is probably heavily influenced by 
property is closer to the surrounding GTA. GTA is in its own board as well, but there there is several smaller boards around there that probably influence some of the higher selling prices here. Um, but the average prices in January were around the nine hundred thousand dollar mark for the entire uh, encapsulation of those twenty three boards. In Kingston, at the same time, the average selling price was seven hundred. We've seen Kingston drop from an average of 700,000 to just over 600,000. Well, at the same time, we've seen the entire board, the average drop from just under 900 to just over 700. So you've seen about a $200,000 decrease in all of the boards uh, as an average, but only a, about a $100,000 decrease in Kingston board, which goes back to just it being a more resilient market, right? Stable market. There's yeah. always people relocating here, people transitioning in and out of this community, uh, people that have to sell, people that have to buy, um, and, and it helps to keep stable. So uh, when we show the graphs, you'll see the sort of, you know, a sharp, uh, the, the graph that uh, illustrates all of the boards in our, in our, that we're connected to, it's a more severe drop. We're in Kingston, it's a, it's a, it's a gradual decline. And it, it hasn't gone below uh, even uh, the December 2021 levels or whatever. Yeah, I mean, no, let me, so it's, it's back to, Let's see. We're 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 pretty much December 2021. Oh, December. We're yeah. back to December yeah. 2021, which still was phenomenal. Phenomenal. <laughs> it's <laughs> a record first time, right? Right. Exactly. So that's just it. it. And so you know, prices are dropping. Yes, from from those crazy levels uh, at the beginning of the year because we've already talked about all those variables that conspired to create that perfect storm. Um, to now. Um, uh, your house still has value. Uh, your house is still worth the most it's ever been worth. Uh, uh, probably, yeah. and it's worth more from the time that you purchased it. Um, you know, as long as it wasn't in January, February, March of 2022. Um, and, and so that's, and that's when people say I overpaid for the house. Well, you overpaid for it if you had to sell it tomorrow, I guess, maybe, yeah. right? And you're going to realize what that really means in terms of a, of a potential loss from purchase price to sale price. But in the next five years, I dare say that you you didn't overpay yeah. for anything. And, and that should have been the conversation you were having with your realtor, whoever it was. You know, what are your goals? Are you looking to move in, settle down with your family for five to 10 years? You, you could buy whatever you wanted for, I mean, I dare say any price. Obviously, we wouldn't do that, but yeah. you're, you're going to be seeing appreciation over that, that time period. If you're looking for a flip, January, February is probably a tougher market for you to find something that's suitable. Um, and your realtor probably should have let you know that. Um, and, and now kind of here we are. As long as you had good representation and you have purchased a home in those months, you should be fine. Um, well, sure. yeah. And, and I mean, uh, one of the variables too that we didn't talk about uh, the contributing to maybe a quieter summer uh, is because people are out and enjoying the summer for mm -hmm. the first time in yeah. two years. Uh, you know, I just had to finish having a conversation with a chap that um, they're busy every weekend, gone to a cottage, gone to a campsite, gone to this, gone to that, because that's what people are doing now. Uh, they can take advantage of that time now and, and, and the ability to do that. So people's priorities aren't real estate unless it has to be, yeah. right? Unless you're in a situation where you need to sell or you need to buy. Um, and though there's still those that are looking, uh, you know, online and, and that you never know when there's going to be a need. And, and so it's never a, a wrong time to list your property. Uh, in, in any market. Um, it's just a, man, a function of um, making sure you understand the, 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 the parameters of, of the marketplace, what's happening in the expectation in terms of time frame, mm -hmm. uh, value, and, 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 um, and all of that. So anyway, that's, that's why we wanted to have that conversation, sort of give you an idea of, of where we're at, where we're going. Um, uh, you know, is this going to be short-lived? I would think the fall may see a bit of a, a bump in, in activity only simply because given the summer is going to be the summer uh, rates, it's hard to say what happens after tomorrow, if the government's going to do one more rate increase or not. That'll be a, play a big role, I think, in terms yeah. of what happens this fall. Um, yeah. So and, and, like the banks, they've gotten the response they wanted. So the question is, how far are they going to push it? Yes. Right, because obviously, I, I think at the beginning of the year we were talking about rate increases all the way till mid twenty twenty three or something, um, and just how much they've increased them so far and the response they've gotten, I think they would 
probably not be doing any justice to the economy if they kept increasing them into mid 2023. I, I don't disagree. With I, you I would for expect sure. after this, you're going to see potentially another hit to the market and and just the general economy. And I think at that point, they're really going to assess if they want to keep going there, if they want to level off. Yeah. But to be seen. No, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you for listening and tuning in, guys. And uh, we'll have all of these graphs and uh, stats overlaid on the podcast. So, and um, yeah, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.